Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound. And in this short video, I'm gonna walk you through the speaker installation in the car where we are. It's not finished, but then you can see the whole fabrication part of what went into this current crazy project. So it's not a secret for many people that this car, and I might have mentioned it before, um, is owned by the same person who used to own the Insignia, or what we built in 2019 and 20, I believe. No, 2021. Um, unfortunately, his car was vandalized to the point that it was written off and he had no other option other than doing doing the thing that he was planning anyway, but it happened now too soon to buy a new car. So then we were planning this car last year um, and now we are at the stage that the speakers are installed, but we knew that in this car we wouldn't be able to do anything that crazy like we did in the Insignia. Yet we could still get great results in this one. Um, yes, many people can ask why didn't we pull the dashboard out to fit the mid-range? Well, this is just not one of those cars where we would pull the dashboard out and then put the mid-range in the corners. Definitely not. It's out of the question uh, because of the design of the dash, the value of the car, personal preference and other things. But we can still get great results if we locate the mids on the pillars. Yes, many people could ask, you know, why didn't we use the factory locations for the mids, which are right underneath uh, the tweeters? Yes, technically you could get fantastic results even that way, which is going to happen in my car as I'm keeping my Mercedes in OEM class. Um, and the mid and the tweet are very close. So you could do that. And it doesn't mean that now we will get a way better um, solution this way, having the mids on the pillars. But one thing is definite that the way we fabricate pillars now the mounting is way more rigid those pillars weigh probably kilo and a half the amount of steel we have in those pillars with the milkshake at the back that's rigid that's not gonna ever buzz like it would in factory location you don't see the door cut in the car yet because taking the door cut in and out millions of times is just not practical because those sail panels cannot come out without the door cut in place because they have, I can show it from here, they have these tabs underneath the panels and once you put the door card on, the door card locks these sail panels in place. So next week we are going to start trimming. As you can see, that's where the tweeter is going to go. We have XT connectors and the tweeters have these little ring terminals to bolt onto the Akiton tweeters. And then uh, once the sail panels are trimmed, then we can put the door cards back. And this is where we have one mid-range dropped in. Um, we will have a very different finish. We will actually hide all the speakers uh, for many reasons. In the sail panel, the Akiton, um, it's one of those things that with ceramic drivers, once you have tweeters in the sail panels, you want to think about rain as well. When you open the door in a big rain, then the rain is gonna drop onto the cone. Um, and with the white ceramic, it's okay. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, but if you happen to have the graphite finish Accuton, then that would leave a mark on the cone. We don't have the graphites, we have the whites yet. Um, I want to make the speakers disappear. I want to create the illusion that we still sit in a OEM car where your eyes are not drawn to the physical location of the speakers. Yes, even with speaker cloth, you will be able to see the speakers, but not as shouty as the white cone. And that's the main reason why I want to hide the speakers, because, yeah, those white cones are not everyone's everyone's preference. Um, but when we got these speakers as the very, very first production version of these, um, they only had the white version, and swapping them to the graphite is not quite easy financially because these speakers are not cheap. So we will make them blend, blend in with um, grills and speaker cloth to hide them. We will use exactly the same um, headlining material, which is not Alcantara. It's a new material many car manufacturers use. Uh, it's called Dynamica, which is a vegan material. They didn't kill any anymore to get this stuff, although I'm not even sure what Alcantara is made out of, but we managed to source the same material and we will use that for trimming the pillars and the sail panels. 
Yes, again, many people could ask why we didn't use the tweeters on the pillars too. But as you can see, that blue line, that tape up there, that's the 40 millimeter rule in Emma. Many people don't realize how tricky it can be in many cars when people want to compete and they want to comply with the rules. They don't want to lose points because of the visibility rule. So you can see those black dots. So where those black dots end, that's where they measure 40 millimeter. So this tape was now pulled at 38 and they look at it from driving position and the phone is right in front of my face and we should be way within that rule so we are not blocking the view so that's another reason why we have this certain aiming for the mid-range because yes a little bit more on axis would be ideal but with tweeters in the sail panels and i can't well, i could shut the door i'm not shutting it completely because I could pull that and get out, but um, with tweeters in the sail panels, this way we can have a better aiming for the tweeters to get all the detail we want, where the frequency range uh, becomes directional. So even with that off axis aiming on the mid range, we can play them up plenty high enough to get the desired range we need. So that's the plan with the mid and the tweet before I show the mid base because I will have to probably no I don't have to jump out you know that in Mercedes the mid base is in the firewall right so we ended up putting the Akiton six and a half right there in factory location it was a bit tricky to modify the mounting but some of you may remember that we built the E63 AMG in 2018, where we could fit the uh, hybrid audio L8 SEs reversed. Um, in that car, we had to reverse the drivers, uh, not to suffocate the breathing of the back of the driver, because yes, those were almost nine inch drivers and they couldn't quite fit with magnet towards the firewall. So we reversed them. In this car, the six and a halfs could be fitted like that without suffocating the airflow because these Accutons have a fantastic basket design and magnet design. And we still had plenty of space for the driver to breathe into the factory location. Uh, the factory location is a sealed application. I might have mentioned it before. It's not IB. It breathes in between this uh, structural layer of the firewall, which is a, a dual layer uh, structure so there's airspace in there plus it can breathe towards the front into the chassis rail through a tiny little hole so we are not sure what uh, airspace it's e e equal to um, yes we could technically measure it and model it uh, if we did an impedance check but we will see what these drivers work like and now some people may be confused why we are putting six and a half in there instead of eight well, it's one of those things that the customer already had these drivers. And now we have an aeroplane running here, so sorry for the noise, guys. Um, I always say that in the Mercedes, having eights is fantastic. If you have the possibility to use eight-inch drivers in there, even factory upgrades are fantastic. Because the result mainly depends on the location and the application, not as much on the driver's quality as such. Because now if we used the six and a half, I've seen people mounting them there, like in many other cars, they cut the plastic, relocate the cables, and they make a mounting on this flimsy plastic inner skin. That would be just anything that I'm always against. You need rigid mounting for mid base, and there's nothing more rigid than that down there. That's mounted straight onto the firewall, which is the strongest part of the car. Um, so over there, nothing is going to rattle and buzz like here. Plus the location related uh, response problems you can get from door location when it comes to cancellations and null points in the frequency range um, that can make door locations not quite ideal in any car. Um, whereas the firewall is a bit more preferred. We get better response out of them in the intended range. 
even if they are so far down, they can play up to the range where the mids can take over and then we can blend them in and then you will hear the mid bass from there. Magic. So yes, now people can ask, okay, Pete, you fitted the six and a halves in the firewall OEM location, but you know, it's just a six and a half. Can it be integrated to a sub in the boot? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. That's why I always recommend anyone to use the eight inch size. And as I mentioned earlier, even factory upgrades, there are so many brands that make them like Stag, Gladen, uh, Audio Tech Fisher has the match range. Focal has a factory upgrade option as well. Ground Zero, so many of them have factory upgrade options now and they all perform fantastic. To be fair, the mid-bass performance in Mercedes is probably the best out of all the factory cars. Even some some cases, even with factory speakers, like in my S-Class currently, it's shocking. People don't want to believe it. So if I say, you know, recommend the, using the 8-inch drivers in the firewall, then, then now running six and a halves wouldn't make any sense because it would be very, very difficult to integrate that to a subwoofer at the back because then the subwoofer at the back has its own challenges when it comes to getting perfect integration to the front. But we had a front sub in the Insignia as well. And that's where we now talk about this situation, building this crazy front sub enclosure. So in this one, we could see a way of mounting it downwards. And then we came up with this idea Mounting the driver will be very tricky to push it up and then bolt it in, but we will figure it out. But Eddie was spending quite a lot of time building it. Um, front sub enclosure in the glove box is always the most time consuming fabrication part for any speaker. And this wasn't any different, especially as we wanted to maintain that line, that groove you can see over there. We had to take a mold of the glove box, the original glove box, and use that shape to keep that, maintain that. And then we had to blend in the speaker mounting at the bottom. Yes, definitely tricky. Many people could ask why we did the usual crazy puzzle technique. Um, whereas many people could say that, oh, fiberglass would have been quicker, easier, da 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 da, -da. usual, usual. It's one of those things that I just hate working with fiberglass upside down. I've done it billions of times. And in this car, the top section of the enclosure is quite deep. It goes quite far in and you would have to do a lot of fiberglassing upwards and you would have a lot of resin dripping and keeping the chop mat up on, on, on the top section as well would be quite a nightmare. So I started building the enclosure from those little wooden bits. Um, and be careful when you cut those bits on a table saw, because there you go. I ended up fighting with the table saw, which was stronger than me. Um, so always be very careful using power tools, never get close to them. And yet, what did I do? I got close to it, but fucking cut myself. <laughs> which is, which is, you know, one of those things that people don't want to believe how hard work it is to do custom fabrication and do all this. It's not, not as easy. When it's done, it looks beautiful, but most people wouldn't believe that probably we have 50 hours spent on this front sub enclosure to build it off, make it strong, fill it, strengthen it, um, do all the mountings, speaker connection. We have to fit the factory LED light underneath it as well, because that has to be plugged in. Otherwise the circuit breaks and then certain parts of these LED lights don't function. So there are so many little things to think about. Getting these tolerances perfect, like that gapping you see between the enclosure and the trim panel has to be even all the way. And you also have to, to maintain the, the height with this. When it's gonna be trimmed, you want to have the same, same flow. You don't wanna break the flow. Um, so you are fighting with millimeters in this case. It's definitely not a, a project that I would advise to anyone without any experience because it took us roughly 50 hours to build it. For most people, it would take ages. And if you can only work on it a couple of hours a day, this, this project with the front sub glove box installation could take months for some people. But yeah, this will blend in. Once it's trimmed, you will see this will look absolutely epic. 
and then we will have most of the music playing from the front and then this way we will have to integrate the rear sub i'm gonna show in a second you could see from the introduction that we were talking about fitting this crazy big gl 13w7 we knew that IB installation in this car wouldn't quite be an option. Um, so we were looking for a sub that could play the low lows as close as an IB subwoofer like we had in the Insignia, the Acoustic Elegance 15. Many people know I love those drivers or, well, I just love anything IB. It's so effortless, accurate, if you use the right driver for the application. But in this car, cutting the floor wasn't an option. And I don't think it will be an option ever. We managed to find space on this side of the enclosure because there's a cavity uh, where I build the box that it goes all the way down. And over there we could have cut out, but uh, yeah, it's roughly around 400 square centimeter, which is 50% of a cone size of a 15 inch sub. So technically we could have a 15 inch driver uh, breathing out like that. But if this works out, then I don't think we're gonna need that. Question, how big is the enclosure, right? It's quite wide, it's shallow with many braces, plus we have the drop. I counted it uh, section by section. The overall internal is 69 liters minus the braces. So we are probably looking at like 65 liters, which is one cubic foot is 28, 56, so we have around 2.2 cubic foot, which is quite big. The factory recommends 56, so we have 65, a bit more. Um, so we have a smoother roll off lower F3 point. So that should allow us to play this sub crazy low. Um, and we will have plenty of power on it because we changed our mind. Original plan was to use the existing amplifier the customer had, which is a Zapco 400.2. But the coil configuration of this sub is a bit tricky. It's duo 1.5. Um, resistance on it is 1.1, 1.2 ohm each coil. And that could be a bit of a stress for the amplifier. And we decided to actually run two monoblocks. Uh, we will talk about that when we have the next video, talking about the full wiring of this build because it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, we, we are close to having it finished. You can see the Steg amplifiers, they're upside down. Zapco in there, but we will talk about that in a separate video because this is a very complex wiring job in this in this car for sure. But I wanted to show this enclosure, how it was built, how it's bolted down. It's bolted down in the middle of the enclosure uh, at three points into the crash bar underneath the enclosure. And we also have brackets on each side going into factory bolting points with big chunky M10 size bolts. And the brackets are also bolted through uh, the enclosure. So this enclosure is not going to move anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. Should they need to get to the battery pack? As you could see, we designed this rack in a way that it can tip. The whole rack can tip once like that for the stag amps. So we can get to the stuff underneath where we will have the DSP, the six channels, Zapco and some other bits. But the whole rack can tip back and then they can pull the battery out. But in order to do that, yes, this enclosure will have to come out, but that's relatively easy. What is not easy is mounting this sub, this particular sub upside down. And then now I will have to cut the video and show you why I'm saying that. As you could see, yes, this is not, <laughs> Not my favorite, not my favorite subwoofer to, to mount or, or in any way. It's pretty frightening as you could see um, how you had to take it apart and then bolt it. But this way we can easily take it in and out. I have all those bolt points which are not bolted down yet. But um, yeah, this way we could, we could make it reversed. I put XD quick connectors on the sub so we can unplug the whole sub. Uh, and the short fly leads stay on this ring, sub can be lifted out, then we can get to the bolts underneath. Those can come out and the whole enclo enclosure can come out. It shouldn't take probably more than five minutes. And then after that, the whole rack can be tipped and then they can get to the battery pack. Hopefully they will never have to do that. But if you build a system on this level, then 
yeah, you want to prepare for the worst case scenario. You want to make sure that the customer can also uh, change anything if anything goes wrong. And yes, we have the added, added tricky part that this car is going back to Denmark. So it's really far away from us. So that's pretty much it for the speaker installation. Other than, yes, we fitted uh, speakers at, at the rear doors as well, running semi-active. Uh, four inch plug and play upgrade from uh, Blam and the tweeter is from the same bread, but the tweeters are separate. They are not from that two way set. Uh, we put caps on the tweeters so they will run semi active. And we have also fitted hybrid audio L2 SEs that we had from the Insignia up there, over there, uh, that I can't show now, but you can see the picture how we mounted them in the factory mounting bracket. For what we had to sacrifice, a factory speaker, but then hey ho, it would have ended it, ended up in the bin anyway. So we just modified uh, the factory uh, bracket of the speaker, um, 3D printed mounting ring, bought it the drivers in, and they went straight back in to the factory location. So yeah, do we need those speakers at the back? Not really, but we have the speakers, we have channels anyway, and it will be pretty nice on a show when the boot is open and then those play here, so you will hear not just the bass pumping here, but you will have nice music playing right at the back. Many people will climb into this boot anyway, they will stick their head in, so they will hear nice music here at the back too. Plus, they can be also used for rear passengers, although that's not quite the case, because the owner doesn't really have rear passengers in this car quite often. Um, but if he has passengers, then the rear roof speakers can be utilized as a differential rear field for the rear passengers too so yeah it's a pretty pretty big project we have um, 14 dsp channels 14 speakers it will be quite something but you will see how it all comes together um, and if you want to see more more about this project what challenges we had what solutions we came up with um, how we worked around things. If you want to see the daily updates of this project, then you can go to our Patreon channel. Uh, you can see a link to that in the description. Uh, click on description under the video, then you have a link straight there where you can, I don't even know where we are, but probably we have more than 25 daily updates of this project where you can see everything step by step every day, what went into it. Um, so yeah, if you're one of those who you want to learn more about car audio, then check out our channel. It's definitely worth checking it because you can also go back more than two years worth of content and you can learn a hell of a lot. All right, guys, I'm going to leave this video here. Hopefully you liked it. Feel free to share it, comment on it, do, do everything you can to spread the word, to educate people, to show people what's possible in car audio. Yes, this is extreme. Um, I, I don't advise everyone to dream about a project like this because it's an absolute nightmare even for us to get everything fitted in a relatively short time although we have six weeks for the car it doesn't sound like it's a short time but trust me the hours are flying into a project like this we will probably get close to 350 400 hours to the time this this project is finished and that's a lot of labor and that's you know time us doing it with eddie um if you don't have this experience you will you will take all your free time and it will take years to build something like this. Um, you can get great results in this car even without that, uh, without going this mad. Honestly, Mercedes platform is fantastic. You can do most integration, you can do many things. Uh, we will talk about that later as well, especially in the next video when we talk about the full wiring of this car. But for now, I'm gonna leave it here, cut it here, guys. Hopefully you liked it. Um, and then I will talk to you very soon in the next one. Take care.